Hey, what's up guys? This is Chris and I'm back with more Everyday RC. And I'm proud to present to you my completed Rustler Mamba Monster 100 mile per hour application. That's right. This project has been in the works for a few months now and it took me about three weeks from start to finish to complete the vehicle. But over the past couple of months I've been doing a lot of research. I've been watching a lot of Rustler videos on YouTube. And of course you guys already know YouTube is the best place to get your research on your RC vehicles. And there's a lot of helpful people out there that gave me some tips here and there. And Geostealth R1 started me off with a nice parts list that I went off of. And basically I've taken all that information that everyone's given me and I took the ball and I ran with it in a direction that I wanted to go. And here it is guys, I want to show you everything that I had to do. Now this project required a lot of blood, sweat, time, energy, and customization on my behalf over the past couple of weeks. Believe it or not, I had to do a lot of welding on this. I made my own custom weights, I made my own custom battery tray extenders, and I want to show you all of it right now. So first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to the man, to the inspiration behind this build. And he's known as ACE from NYC, otherwise known as Draven3907. And he was the first guy to put the Mamba Monster in the Rustler. And I wanted to do an homage to him and my good friend Geostealth R1, who also kind of started this whole thing a few years back. And I never would have thought that I'd ever get this much into it, but I got bit by it and I'm hooked. So here we go, you know. I enjoyed this build. This build was one of my favorites. The only other build that I can think that was as epic as this was my 5T, which was a pretty epic build. But this one required a lot of customization, like I said, as far as the soldering I had to do with the electronics and the custom weights and battery tray extender. So I'm going to bring you guys in on a tour and I'm going to try and show you everything that I did to the vehicle and I'm going to try and not make this video crazy long. So. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, guys, here's the finished product up close. I hope you like it. I just finished spraying the body today. I went with a very simple design. I went with a black, and I did a silver stripe along the side here to highlight my Maxim sticker, because you guys know that that's what I'm running in there. So I did a very simple design. Did a silver stripe, followed through along the back here. And I can honestly say there are no flaws on the paint job. It was a very simple design, so there wasn't much to really mess up. But yeah, I just went with a silver stripe along the side here. I went with the clear windows, of course, because I like to see the internals. I just like clear windows. And I also am going to be mounting my GPS right there, so hopefully I'll be able to see the GPS readout without having to take the body on and off every time. So I tried to think about everything beforehand. I did do some carbon fiber effect here and I did carbon fiber on the wing so I thought that looked really cool and I did do carbon fiber on my body washers I got a big sheet of carbon fiber and it was really cheap so I kind of went crazy with it but I tried to do it tastefully and I think it looks pretty good I also put a little piece of carbon fiber right near the antenna hole just to help with the aerodynamics just to cover up that and I'm pretty happy with it, guys. I really like how the paint job came out. So, let me pull the body off, and I'm going to show you everything I've done on the inside. Alright, guys, here it is with the body off. So let me give you a quick 360 so you can soak in all the work that I've done. Now, most of you are probably wondering about this weight that I have here in the front, and that was made by me. That was made with... Two pieces of quarter inch steel that I cut out with a plasma cutter and then I welded them together to make it a half inch of steel and it weighs one pound five ounces and then I shaped it and polished it and then wrapped it with the carbon fiber and I'll show you a couple of pictures of me making that. <laughs> Here we go. 
So that's how I made the weight. And another bit of welding that I had to do was on these battery tray post extenders. Now I bought the battery tray extender kit for the Traxxas Rustler, but it still wasn't high enough for my two MaxAmps 5450 11.1 volt 120C 3S LiPos. So I am running 6S LiPos in here, but the battery tray extender kit didn't help me out. I didn't have enough clearance. So I actually welded the post to the spacers that you get that you would use to raise your ESC tray in the back. Well, I used them and I welded them to the posts and then I welded a screw to the bottom for threads and then I wrapped them with some yellow Tigon fuel line and some black heat shrink tubing to cushion it from side to side. And I'm absolutely happy with how that came out. I made four of them. Those of you that have a rustler, you know that there are other two holes here in the back. I'm not really sure what you would use those for, but there are two other holes here. So I figured why not make four posts? So I made four posts and it is a little offset, the holes, but it is enough to hold the batteries in and they're not going anywhere, guys. So I'm really happy with how that came out. I am gonna be ordering a black one for the back. I know this one is gray right now, but I have a black one coming in so it'll match. Okay, so that's what I did with, as far as my battery tray. This Velcro is just a piece of Velcro I had from some camera. It's not a battery uh, RC Velcro or anything like that. It's just a piece of Velcro I had laying around and I wrapped it around there because I didn't want to notch out my chassis for my Velcro straps. I wanted to utilize an actual battery tray hold down. So these batteries aren't going anywhere. Okay, now as far as customizing the chassis, I did have to notch out my chassis right here for my battery wires because I wanted them to lay sideways. So I did notch out my chassis right there. I did notch out the chassis for my ESC. I was thinking about putting the ESC up a little bit and putting it on the tray and not having to notch out my chassis, but I wanted the center of gravity to be as low as possible. So I did notch out my chassis and I made it completely even with my receiver box so that it is completely balanced. I tried to balance the truck out as best as I could and distribute the weight as evenly as possible. So I'm extremely happy with how that came out. I notched out the chassis for that and I did notch out the chassis back here to run my wires through there and I notched out on this side as well to have my batteries come out and come to my receiver box. I stuffed in all the extra wire in there so it's very neat and put away and you don't even notice it. And that's it as far as notching out and customizing the chassis. Now let me get to the electronics, which this is the 2200 kV motor and ESC combo out of my E-Revo. Now, because it's from the E-Revo, it was set up for the E-Revo, so the wires weren't long enough. So I actually had to solder my own leads, make my own wire leads to lengthen the wires so that they would be able to meet one another. So I used Castle 10 gauge wire and I believe they're the 6.5 millimeter bullet connectors. So I made my own wire leads. I ran them through the hole in the shock tower and I'm really happy with how that worked out. I did solder new Dean's connectors on here as well as my 10 amp BEC and I ran the BEC and I just used some Velcro and I stuck it right on top of the old ESC tray. And I'm really happy with how that came out. So that's the electronics in the unit. And I'm really happy with how neat everything is and tucked away. You know, it looks really, really good. So let me run through the parts list real quick and then hopefully I can get this video done for you guys. <laughs> First and foremost is I have the Indigy Gunmetal aluminum transmission housing, and I have the Intigy aluminum front bulkhead in gunmetal as well. Okay. Then I have the Intigy 37 tooth spur gear, and I have the Techno Mod 128 tooth pinion gear. Okay. I do have the Traxxas 17 millimeter hub adapters and the STRC aluminum bell cranks, which I deanodized them together. I soaked them in battery acid overnight 
and I've de-anodized them that way. So just in case you're wondering about that, these are the blue Traxxas that I de-anodized. And I believe the STRC belt cranks were green anodized. So they're both silver now to match everything. Okay. I have a complete Volca bearing kit in here in the transmission and in the axle carrier. So I'm running Volca bearings and everything. I have um, the Traxxas steel constant velocity drive shafts. I have the T-Bone Racing rear skid plate. I have the RPM front bumper, which I did install regular way, but I did heat it up and bend it straight so that it's level with everything and hopefully it helps with the aerodynamics a little bit. Um, I do have the, of course, the RPM rear shock tower, the RPM front shock tower, RPM A-arms, axle carriers, caster blocks. I do have RPM rod ends, short rod ends and long rod ends. I have, I'm not sure who makes it, but if you go on eBay, it's just an aluminum tie bar in the front rather than the fiberglass tie bar. I do have, of course, the GRPs, medium compound. I am running the Traxxas big bore shocks out of my slash. So I did do the shock mod to those. Sorry about shaking the camera around. I did do the shock mod to those and I'm really happy with those and I'm running the bad horsey shock covers on there. So I'm really happy how everything came out guys. All right guys, so that was a quick overview on my Rustler Mamba Monster. There was a lot to cover in this video so I'm sure I didn't get to everything. I didn't want to make this video too long, so if there's anything you have a question on, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I just wanted to thank each and every one of my subscribers. I just hit and soared past 2,000 subscribers, so I'm like really psyched about that. Thank you for all the support and all the helpful advice I've gotten along the way from everyone out there on YouTube. You guys are what make me keep doing this because of all your positive feedback. So thanks a lot to everyone out there. I hope you guys are making it happen in your RC world. And for now, this is Chris the Everyday RC Guy saying thanks for watching. Yeah.